I think it was love at first sight. She was stunning when we first met. It was truly a one-of-a-kind experience. I think she might be the one. Hey guys, it's Alan here. I hope you enjoyed that little intro there. Today, we're gonna take a look at the White Fox Mechanical Keyboard, a compact programmable keyboard designed by Matteo Spinello and Input Club, both of which have been a big supporting part of the keyboard community. So just a quick little backstory. About two years ago, the White Fox first appeared on MassDrop as a build-it-yourself keyboard kit. Because of how well the product was received by the users, Matteo along with Input Club then launched a Kickstarter campaign in June 2017 to produce pre-assembled version of the keyboards that work straight out of the box. The campaign was a huge success as they raised almost $400,000 which was four times of their original goal. Fast forward to now, you can purchase the White Fox Mechanical Keyboard on the Kono Store which is Input Club's online storefront, assembled for $169 or as a do-it-yourself kit for a little over $200. Out of the box, aside from the keyboard, you get a carrying case, a 1.75 meter braided USB-C to USB-A cable, extra keycaps from the White Fox set, two additional rubber feet, and a greeting card from Input Club. The White Fox is a 65% keyboard, which sits right between 10 keyless and 60% keyboard. I would say the White Fox is pretty similar to my Poker 3 keyboard. No numpad, no function keys, but with addition of arrow keys making it both compact and functional. The layout of the keyboard, so-called True Fox, is claimed to be optimized for quick typing and computer input. However, the shortened backspace key has been a challenge for me since day one, as I would keep hitting the right bracket key when I intended to click on the backspace key. But I think that's just something I'll eventually get used to. The aluminum body of the White Fox is CNC machined, meaning the case is precisely cut through a highly consistent automatic process. The body is also anodized, meaning the metal surface is coated with a corrosion-resistant finish, making it more durable for long-term use. On the back of the keyboard, you have four rubberized feet, two of which are raised to give you that inclined typing angle. The aluminum case also feels very sturdy to type on, no occurrences of wobbling or shifting. The keycaps of the White Fox are dye-sublimated PBT plastic and cherry profile and it works with all Cherry MX compatible switches, which I will talk more about in a little bit. The PCB designed by Input Club is open source and fully programmable using the online configuration tool. There are a total of 8 function layers you can configure with the White Fox. By assigning these F keys here to your keyboard, you can switch between layers with a simple click of a button. However, I don't see how it is practical for average users to use all 8 layers, but for those of you who can leverage this feature, the options are here for you. While all the keys are customizable, programming the White Fox is a dreadful process. I'm not gonna go over the whole procedure because it will probably bore you to death, but I do want to point out that you will need to download extra files and enter a few command lines in your terminal or command prompt to reconfigure your keys. To save you some trouble, I'll leave an useful guide I found online in the description below. The PCB will support LEDs, but they are not included in the keyboard so you will have to purchase and solder them separately. For those of you who are interested in the LEDs, Input Club will soon be offering them for sale on their website. Before I get into the switches of the White Fox, I want to preface that because this is a custom keyboard, there are several types of switches available on their Kono website as well as other online sources. So for me, instead of getting the White Fox from the official store for $169, I got the keyboard with Kyle Brown switches from a website called Monoprice. They had it on sale for just $120. I'll leave a link of the website down below, though I'm not sure whether the deal is still active. There is, however, an advantage of buying the White Fox on the official Kono store. Kono offers their exclusive switches like the Hako and Kale Speed Type switches, whereas other shopping carts will only offer the standard Kale Brown and Red switches, which is what I got. But like I said, you will have to pay for the full retail for these. If you're new to the keyboard community, Kale, also known as Kaiwa Electronics, is a major Chinese-based switch manufacturer that competes directly with Cherry. 
People often refer to Kale switches as the cheaper Cherry MX clones just because how similar they are. Keycaps designed for Cherry MX stamps are also compatible with Kale switches. The Kale Brown switches I've tried are actually pretty great to type on. The tactility is quite defined and the keys don't require a lot of force to bottom out. Here is a quick typing test of the White Fox with Kale Brown switches. One thing I've noticed from the Cal Brown switches is that the actuation point, which is the point where the keystroke is registered, is slightly lower than the tactile point where the tactile bump occurs. I only found out about this by gently tapping the keys and realized that sometimes I needed to push the keys past the tactile point in order for them to be registered. But if you're a heavy handed bottom out typer like me, this shouldn't be a problem for you. So how are the Kel Browns different from the Hakko and Kelt speed switches offered on the Kono store? And which one should you buy? Though I haven't actually tried those switches yet, I've done a fair amount of research and here's what I think. Under the Hakko line, there are the Hakko True and Hakko Clear switches, both of which use Kel's box switch architecture. While Input Club claims that these are tactile switches, some people who have actually tried them don't necessarily agree. As many have said online, the tactility is minimal at best, and it feels like typing with linear switches. The heavy spring use in the Hakko True and Clear has a bottom out force of 75 grams and 95 grams respectively. That's intended to discourage you from bottoming out the slider when you type. Since all mechanical switches register your keystrokes before they hit the bottom, pressing them all the way down is not necessarily the best way to type and plus, it can cause finger fatigue if you're a volume typer. Cal's new speed type switches, Silver, Bronze, and Copper, are basically the way of saying linear, clicky, and tactile switches, with a higher actuation point and shorter total travel distance. The name Speed indicates that they are made for gaming, but could be also great for a rapid typing session. Overall, the White Fox is a fantastic mechanical keyboard due to its compact form factor, solid build quality, eye-catching aesthetics, and also the fact that it feels very nice to type on. Even though you have to go through a complicated process every time you program your keys, it doesn't really affect the performance of the keyboard. Though I'm still not fully used to the mini backspace key, but I think I'll be able to adjust to it in a few more weeks. Personally, I think the price may be justifiable if you can get it for a discount. But if you want to pay for the full price and get the Hakko True or Hakko Clear switches for that minimal tactility and non-bottoming out typing experience, be my guest. Or if you're a heavy gamer looking for a speedy reactive keyboard, Kaos speed type switches may also be something to look into. So there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It actually took me a while to make because I just got into this mechanical keyboard thing recently. Thank you guys so much for watching, please give it a like or subscribe for more videos like this. I'll see you guys in the next one.